Welcome back to another episode of Fantasy Lacrosse Focus. I'm your host, Tyler Cunnington. Today we're breaking down the best performances from week six and looking ahead to week number seven. This weekend was heavy on conference matchups, so let's see how it all went down. Starting off with the attack, you may remember last week Keegan Khan had the best fantasy performance to date with 48 points. Connor Kirst was one shy of that this week. His four goals, three assists, seven ground balls, and two cause turnovers was good for 47 fantasy points in their win over Penn State. Number two is Matt Grillo, five goals, two assists, a couple ground balls. That's good for 36 fantasy points. Number three, Jared Bernhardt, also five goals, two assists, and a ground ball or two. That's 34 fantasy points. Tied with him is Matt Moore of Virginia. Two goals and six apples, along with a few other ground balls and a turnover, left him at 34 fantasy points. And number five, Kieran Mullins, another Scarlet Knight. Five goals, one assist for 30 fantasy points. Next up, the midfielders. We've got three Ryans to top off the start of this list. Ryan Zimmerman at number one for the Providence Friars. Two goals, three assists, a couple ground balls, and a turnover. He had 23 fantasy points. Number two is teammate Ryan Narocki on the midline. One goal, four assists for 21 fantasy points. And number three, Ryan Tarafenko, the do-it-all midfielder, had three goals, eight ground balls, and a turnover. That's 21 fantasy points. Coming in at number four, Mo Meyer of Notre Dame, his breakout game of the season. Four goals for an even 20 fantasy points. And number five, Jack Hanna of Denver. Three goals, one assist, and a few ground balls for 19 fantasy points. And lastly, the Fogos. Number one for Providence again, RJ Romeo, 72%, one assist, and nine ground balls gave him 30 fantasy points on the weekend. Number two, Petey LaSala continuing his outstanding campaign here for Virginia. 68%, one goal, one assist, seven ground balls for 29 fantasy points as he helped them take over UNC again. Number three, Jake Naso with 73% and eight ground balls for 25 fantasy points. He was unable to help the Blue Devils take down the Fighting Irish. Number four, Gerard Arceri, 63% and 13 ground balls. That gave him 24 fantasy points. And lastly, James Riley, 64% and nine ground balls 22 fantasy points for the Hoyas. And now what you've all been waiting for, the matchups to take advantage of this weekend. Firstly, however you have to fit it into your budget, make room for Virginia's offensive core as they face Duke on Thursday and Utah on Saturday, allowing for some major double dipping and some big point totals. Number two, Penn State's gonna take on Michigan for the second time this season. Josh Zawada and Bryce Clay had five points each versus the Nittany Lions and Mac O'Keefe notched a hat-trick with an assist. Look for similar production out of each team's top players. Number three, Denver looking for their second takedown of Big East rival Georgetown this season. Ethan Walker could very well be absent due to injury again, so look toward Jackson Morrill, Jack Hanna, and Alex Simmons to pick up the slack just in case. And lastly, number five, the Rutgers attack will be worthy of your budget versus Hopkins this week as they combined for 17 points versus the Jays back on March 20th. Plus, the Jays are on a four-game losing streak. That's going to do it here for week number six. Be sure to follow myself and Lax Playground on Twitter for more fantasy-related content. Plus, make some time this week to listen to the Fantasy Lacrosse podcast for more in-depth breakdowns. This has been Fantasy Lacrosse Focus. I'm Tyler Cunnington. Peace out. We'll